Happy 8th birthday, Nathaniel. I'm so excited to be able to share my love of knitting with you. Since we couldn't be together in person, I thought I'd make you this video on how to knit. Before we begin, you're going to have to learn a few things. This yarn I'm using is 100% organic cotton from Classic Elite Yarn. It's called Seedling. The first step is to make a slip knot. You have your ball end of yarn and you have your tail end of yarn. So, to make a slip knot, hold the yarn like so and bring your right hand forward, making a backwards loop, and then fold the loop over the yarn and fish the yarn through to make a slip knot. You know it's a slip knot because you can make it disappear. I'll demonstrate again. Fold your right hand forward to make a loop. The ball end of the yarn is in front of the tail end of the yarn. It sort of looks like a racetrack loop de loo. Then fold your loop over a section on the ball end of the yarn, fish the yarn through and pull tight to make a loop. Again, you know you've done it right when you can make it disappear. I'm going to make a wrong knot here. If you do this and it goes like that, and you get this knot here. See the knot right there? You've done a square knot instead of a slip knot. So just Work it loose, because you don't want to waste yarn. And undo it. Last time. Once you're confident you can make a slip knot, it's time to cast on. Measure out a length of yarn from your hand to your elbow and then make your slip knot there. You need to have a long tail in order to cast on the stitches. And remember this is the ball side of yarn. So now that you've made the slip knot, insert your needle and pull tight. You don't want to pull so tight that it can't move and you don't want it to be so loose that it slips off the bottom. So pull tight just so that it gently glides. And that's your first stitch. Now for your next stitch, loop de loo again. And lasso it over the knitting needle. Take your yarn, wrap it around and then lift the lasso up and over and pull tight. Again, not so tight that you can't move and not so loose that it slips off, just so that it will slide. Again, make your loop to loop. Lasso it over the knitting needle. Take the ball end of yarn, wrap it around the knitting needle, and unhook the lasso and pull tight. We now have three stitches on. We're going to keep doing this until 15. Make your loop de loo lasso it over the knitting needle, wrap the yarn from the ball end, and slide the lasso off. Pull tight, but not so tight that you can't move them. Loop de loo with the tail end, lassoed over the needle, with the ball end wrap over the needle, and remove the lasso. And pull tight. We're up to five stitches.
loop de loo, lasso the needle. With the ball end of the yarn, wrap around the needle and remove the lasso. Pull tight, but not too tight. Loop de loo, lasso. Wrap the yarn around the needle. Remove the lasso. Pull tight, but not too tight. Loop de loo with the tail end. Lasso over the needle. With the ball end, wrap over the needle. Remove the lasso over the yarn wrap. Pull tight, but not too tight. Loop de loo with the tail end, lasso it over the needle. With the ball end, wrap it around the needle, and then remove the lasso over the wrapped yarn. Pull tight, but not too tight. Last one. Loop de loo with the tail end, lasso it over the needle. With the ball end, wrap it around and remove the lasso from the needle. Pull tight, but not too tight. We now have 15 stitches. There are two kinds of stitches in knitting, a knit stitch and a purl stitch. I'm going to show you the knit stitch first. That's the smooth side. It comprises four steps. Using the ball of end yarn, not the tail end, insert your knitting needle into the first stitch. Wrap it around, extract, and slip off. Insert your knitting needle into the second stitch. Wrap the yarn around, Extract and slip off. Insert your knitting needle into the third stitch. Wrap the yarn around, extract and slip off. Insert your knitting needle into the fourth stitch. Wrap the yarn around, extract and slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. With these stitches that you're creating on the right needle, you want to make sure that they just slide. If you have too much yarn, they'll slip off. And if they're too tight, you won't be able to get your knitting needle into it on the next row. So insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. This one is a little loose, so I just pull the yarn slightly before doing the next one. You've just knit 15 stitches. Doesn't look like much now, but pretty soon you'll have a pattern that is known as garter stitch, which is a little confusing because they're both called stitch. So with the knitting needle with all the stitches in your left hand. We repeat the same process. Insert, 
wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Now, I am holding the yarn in my right hand. It might not be comfortable for you to do that. You can also hold it in your left hand. But the process is the same. Loop it over your index finger of your left hand. Insert. And then wrap it around the needle. And pull it through with the needle. There's much more needle work with this method. And then slip off. Insert. Use the needle to wrap the yarn around and extract in one motion, slip off. Insert, use the needle to wrap around the yarn and extract in one motion and slip off. If you find this more comfortable, it's a much more efficient and fast way to knit, but it's also a little bit more difficult as you're using the knitting needle instead of your hand to do the work. Try to rotate so you can see what happens behind the scenes. So the needle goes around the yarn that you're holding with your left finger and you pull through all in one motion. Okay, that's enough of that kind of knitting. Not my favorite. I'll go back to the right, holding it in the right hand. And in order to keep the tension right, I wrap it around my finger. That way, these stitches that I make aren't too loose because I have more control over the yarn. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, ooh. If that happens and you insert it and it falls just to the other needle, just put the left needle back in and slip it back over. Back and forth and back, oops, and falls off, that's okay too. Just try and grab it before you rip it out. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. So we've now done two rows of knit and we're starting to create this garter stitch. Switch your needles. And we're going to do one more row of knit stitches and then I'll show you the purl. I'm going to use the yarn in my right hand and I'm not going to talk because I know you like to concentrate. You've just created another row of knit stitches. See this, we're getting this bumpy texture, which is called garter stitch. Now we're going to learn the purl stitch. Instead of inserting through the front of the loop, you insert through the back. You do the same wrap, extract, slip off as you do with knit. Insert through the back, Wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. 
Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. And then switch your needles. So with the first row of pearl, you can see we're getting a smooth texture on the front and a much more solid bumpy texture on the back. That's called stockinette. In order to continue in the stockinette stitch, we knit the rows that are on the front and we purl the rows that are on the back. So remember you insert, wrap, extract, slip off, insert, wrap, extract, slip off. and then switch. In order to continue on in the stockinette with the bumpy on the back and the smooth on the front, you need to purl the wrong side. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. Insert through the back, wrap, extract, slip off. developing quite a large swatch here. So continue on knitting on the front and purling on the back until you have the 15 stitches as long as you want them. You could make it into a karate belt or a tie or a washcloth. The possibilities are endless. There's one more thing you have to learn, and that's how to bind off in order to not have to wear your knitting needle around with you. It's a little bit tricky, but I'm sure you can get it. So the first bind off stitch is just like a knit stitch. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Then insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Now you have two stitches on this right hand, so you want to take this first stitch and slip it over the second stitch. Now you only have one. And then insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Take the first stitch, slip it over the second stitch, 
so you only have one. Insert, wrap, extract, slip off. Take the first stitch, slip it over the second stitch, so you only have one. You want to do this really loose or else your bind off row will pucker and be tighter than the rest of your knitting. So, now what do you think you do? Well, you've got this one last stitch. In order for it all not to rip out, make the stitch really big. And take your ball of yarn up through the back of the stitch and pull tight. And that binds off all the stitches. If you don't get the ball of yarn through and you pull tight, it doesn't. Ah! But that's okay. Just hold it carefully and stick your knitting needle back through the two loops. And return the first loop to your right knitting needle. Repeat the last stitch, insert wrap, extract, slip off, take the first stitch over the second stitch, and try again. Make the loop really big, and just like making the slip knot, fish through your ball of yarn, and whoops, don't use your tail too, and pull tight. And there you have your first swatch. I expect yours to be much bigger. I'm talking huge, very long. I look so forward to seeing your progress pictures. And be sure to call or email me if you have any questions. Happy 8th birthday, Nathaniel. Love Yaya and Puddles.